wealth of knowledge, and he flew in <clears throat> to Melbourne, from Melbourne to here just for today, and he's going back there later on. So, very busy man, and I'm really happy that he got to come here and meet you guys. <clears throat> so, where does that leave coaching? Because only together can we create change. You're all really important in the fight against the addiction epidemic. I shouldn't really say fight, that sounds like the, the US, you know, fight against drugs, but it's not that, it is a fight, but it's against the addiction, not the stigma and not the person. You know, whatever, whatever happens, the, the powers that be, or, you know, has, we've got alcohol, we've got drugs, we've got all sorts of different substances, and you're gonna learn all about them in the next couple of days. So I'm not gonna bog you down with that. What we're here for is, we all work in the industry, is that, is that a fair assumption? Who doesn't work in the industry of addiction, delivering? So good. So we're all important um, people that really need to help other people evolve. You know, uh, they say addiction is associated with shame and all the desolateness and all the energies associated with addiction is at the bottom level. And then the evolution is all the way here and we've got divinity right at the top. So we really help, in our job, we really need to go and take them through the rungs of evolution. And, and that's really where all this is going to now. So every single person here today is drawn here for a reason. And I totally believe that. So for whatever world that you're ruminating in, for whatever people that you're seeing, the clients that you're helping, your presence today is, is valued and very much respected. And really, what we really need to do is change the I to we, so that illness becomes wellness. I mean, we've heard it all before, and I just owned it because I don't know who said it. <laughs> but really, that's, that's what we need to do together. And the coaching relationship helps us do that. It'll become much, much clearer when I look at the comp when I show you the competencies of coaching. And what you will see there will amaze you the things that we can do within the coaching model. It's really quite amazing. As you know, in sports, it's all about winning and it's all about taking the problem or taking the competition in the public arena. And that's exactly where coaching is. It's in the public arena, meaning the shame and the guilt, we dissolve all that. You've got my story right in front of you. It talks about prostitution, sex work. It talks about gangsters. It talks about 10 times in the hospital, tied up, getting dexted as I call it. But that's, that's a part of me. There's no repressing that. And there's no me going, oh, I don't want to know. Well, I better know. I better be in charge of it. I better own it. I better be proud of it. Not proud of it, but know that those things happened for a reason. And that is the same for every single one of you here. For whatever happened to you, it is there for a reason. So I'm hoping that together we can start to really work together. Because, you know, we share the client's stories, we share all the things, so privacy, all those things, I mean, I'm gonna talk about that later on. We debunk all that. Because how crippling is privacy in the work that we do? It's, you can't move. <laughs> you gotta talk to that, and that's he's touching her, and she's touching him, and everyone's touching each other. In a, in a child abuse type of a way, and then there's domestic violence, and then the gangster that men, murdered that person, that they're all intrinsically connected. And before you can even say anything to them, the first thing you do when you do counseling is you say the confidentiality of book. You know, I'm here to help you, but if I hear anything that's harmful, I'm gonna report it. Well, how is that gonna change anything? I know for a fact, how, how many doctors have I had now? How many drugs has been pummeled into my system? How many times have they tied me up and stigmatized me for whatever reason? Because they just, people are not listening. So, yeah, so, you know, it, it's just a different approach. We've got to stay away from the sickness and concentrate on the wellness. Because this, concentrating on the sickness is not going to get us anywhere. It hasn't in the past, it won't in the future. And the people that are really make a difference, the Jack Canfields and the Wayne Dwyers and the Stephen Coveys and the John Demartinis, I've worked with them. My mentor works with Richard Branson very, very closely. 
And they're the ones that are really taking the shackles off. And every single um, coaching that we do is videotaped. So I'm going to walk you through a little bit of that. Now, let's just go through and, and look at the three reasons why we're here today. And um, it's somewhere around this. If you've got any other reasons, please raise your hand. But really, it's so that you can be inspired to do your job properly. It's a hard gig <laughs> being out there, having offenders, sex offenders, child abusers, domestic violence people, people that just won't listen to you. It's a hard gig being out in front of them. So how do you inspire those people? Well, you really need to be that which you want to attract. You cannot, like Anthony was saying, Emmanuel was saying before, the child was not um, responsive because you know they're being talked to like an idiot. You're talking to the idiot side of them and not the genius side of them. You need to start talking to them like they are amazing. And that's what the coaching model is, and I'll show you that in a moment. So first is for you. You need to be inspired. You cannot attract inspiration in your client if you're not inspired. You cannot attract anything to that matter. You know, you can't tell them about finances if your finances suck. You can't tell them about, <laughs> you know, you just can't model anything that we are not emulating or trying our best to do, okay? You cannot talk about health if you do not exercise every day. You cannot talk about all the things, so we give them to experts. But then what are we left with, <laughs> you know? So we must be inspired. I beg you, if you're not, if every day you're not going, ah, oh, I love my work, like what Emmanuel is, seven days a week, he comes to Melbourne, I asked him a couple of weeks ago, hey, I've got to talk, yep, I'll go in there, he makes all these beautiful, we're going to give you all the, the um, peripherals for that. I mean, that's hard work, and that's purpose driven, that's divine, that's just inspirational to watch. And I come from the same boat, so I got off track. First one is to inspire yourself. Second is to be able to get help for your clients, for your colleagues, for your coworkers, for your employees, for your organization, for your volunteers, for your loved ones. So for you first, and then for them. That If that you is not handled, them ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. And you're gonna continue to see the same lesson play out in front of you until you handle your business, okay? And then after that, you learn how to inspire the clients to love their life, find their purpose, and heal. So you do it, you emulate it, you um, get help for them, and then you make sure that they change. Is there any other reasons why people are here today? So that's, that probably will cover it. Now, next part is why recovery coaching. You know, recovery coaching is a focus on the goodness. We don't even talk about their medication, they talk to their doctor about that. We don't even talk about any of the things. We've got counselors, we've got healers, we've got so many amazing people on our boat. We don't talk about the things that matter. All we talk about is their goal. Where do they want to go? How are they going to get there? And we focus them on that because why? When they go out there in the world, the crap is already waiting for them. They walk out my door and I'm like, oh, I was so good with you and I got out there and, oh, beat it in. Someone called me, you know, my, my spouse, my wife, my son, my daughter, my co-worker or my client, they're just peeping me off. You know, it's just not working. So we just need to really focus on their capabilities, get them to manage these. Recovery coaching is results driven. The focus is on a purposeful recovery. The, the purpose is to get them back into the community, productive, alive, you know, and really, really heart, uh, heart rewiring, it's action based, and they really expand their awareness, their confidence really start to um, be born, and we train their mind and we do neurological transformations. So neurocortical transformations is happening because of the way that we lead. It's not even leading, it's we walk with them instead of stigmatizing them. And we focus on creating value clients' values, using the coach's expertise. And in recovery coaching, what's the expertise? It's addiction and mental illness. So recovery from that. So if someone is a financial coach, they better be very rich. If someone is 
a spiritual coach, they must be meditating every day and practicing all of that, which my partner is, 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 is one like that. So we really can coach what we are great at. If we're not great at it yet, then we get a coach to see how we can magnify that in us. So it is the way for the future for addiction. Now let's look at the different modalities that is out there. Coaching versus counseling versus treatment versus pharmacology versus rehabilitation and psychiatric hospitalization. Now, I shouldn't really say versus because we, wherever you are placed within any of these systems, you can be the light in that system. You know, and it doesn't have to be a versus, I am better than that, or it's how can we work together? Are you a pastor of a church? Are you in government? Are you in the Navy? Are you in the army? Are you in a hospital? Are you in real estate law? Every single, not just for here, but every single part of life, there is someone suffering from addiction issues. So we really, it's not a versus anymore. It should really be, how can we work together? What can we do together? So again, it's not one is better than the other, and it's not or if mentality. The only versus we should have is life versus death. That is all that we should have. So this is where it gets really exciting for me. There's 11 competencies from the ICF, so the International Coaching Federation. They're available at coachfederation.org.au. Oh no, coachfederation.org. And they've been around for 25, 20 years, since 1995. And they establish competencies of the coaching language and what happens during the coaching sessions. And coaching sessions ideally should be video recorded because why do you think that is? For video recording? That's right. Look at the level that I need to perform at. I want to make sure I'm MCC, baby. <laughs> I'm 90%. ACC is 70%. That's the passing grade. PCC is 80%. MCC is 90%. ACC says you talk 60-40. So the clients talk 60%. You talk 40% because you're still like a little bit like, <laughs> you know, you think you know it all. Um, PCC, you start to go, wow, this is not even about me. This is about them. So we're only allowed to talk 30%. When you're no, it's 70, 80, and 90. So when you're in MCC, you're just there 10% of the way, really supporting their journey and really watching them shine. And you know, Emmanuel has got his way and it's great. And he's a coach, he's a true coach. And that's what coaches do. So when we look at the first competency, you know, we, we think, are we jaded because the system, the industry, da da da? If we're jaded and we've lost trust, well, we need to cultivate this because the third competency I took out first uh, and second because usually when I teach competencies in the recovery coach certification training, we go through each competency. It's about ten hours of work we put in there. So I'm going to really again, like Anthony did, thirty minutes. <laughs> you know, I'm going to try and you know condense it. But you can already see in there. What can you see? ACC, you attend to the client's agenda, but you're attached to his or her own performance. I mean, isn't that what the therapeutic world looks like? You know, you're always there telling them the process and telling them that you know this and you know that. Well, look at the master level. Coach is connected to complete trust. What's complete? It's not 80%. That's not complete. Complete trust is 100%. And we're there, we're in complete trust with the client, and we're in a mutual state of awareness with them. And it can only arise in the moment of joint conversation. So when I go to a coaching session, I drop everything. And I walk in there and I'm excited. I'll see what happens. Let's see how, how this goes. Let's go with the flow. Coach is willing to be vulnerable. Hence, we are allowed to talk about our personal experience to teach the client a lesson 
that they might not see yet. We're not allowed to do that in psychology. We're not even allowed to tell them where we live, <laughs> you know? So that's why it's different. I'm not saying anything about those systems. That's great. It must be there. But it's limiting in its capacity to heal, is all I'm saying. And that I work all day, every day with teachers and, and psychologists and psychiatrists and trainers. And I train myself um, because I know that there's a gap there. So first one is establishing trust and intimacy. Have, has anyone heard intimacy between clients in like therapeutic? I mean, you're not even allowed to mention that word. It's like intimacy, that's boundaries. You know, whereas that is what we must establish with a client in coaching. Coaching presence. So competency number four out of the 11. Ability to be fully conscious. Create spontaneous relationship with the client. Employing a style that is open, flexible, and confident. Being fully pre pleasant, present and flexible, dancing in the moment. So you really got to dance with the things that they tell you. And, and you're thinking in your head, oh, how am I going to propel them? How am I going to propel You know, you want to just lift them, lift them, lift them. If you listen to the coaching sessions that I have in my mind, there's not one negative word that I throw in them to describe the client. I stay right away from that. The world is full of that already. We're hands off. We're not pointing at them. We're not stigmatizing them. That doesn't belong in coaching. So coach is completely connected to the client in master level. And the connection is to the whole of who the client is, how the client learns, what the client has to teach the coach. We're there as learners, learning through them their journey so that we can feed back to them what they need to hear, to go, aha, uh because -huh. if it comes from them, they will initiate the actions. If it comes from you, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. So the coach trusts that the value is inherent in the process, that's the last point in MCC level. So the, I don't need to sell them anything, I don't need to do anything with them. I know for the fact that they're alive, they're a miracle. And that for the fact that they're still here in front of me, they know what they're doing. They know what their relationship is with their mom and their dad and their sisters and their brothers and their cousins. They're in charge. So it's a, a total paradigm shift of how things have been done, has been done up till now. So that's why it's really exciting to study it in my PhD and, and see it in locally here in Australia because it's very big in Canada and UK and America, but it's not so big here in Australia. And even in Australia, there's only, um, there's about millions of people that call themselves coaches, about hundreds of thousands in Australia, millions in America, but only 22,350 are members and only 12,000 are accredited. So if they're not accredited, if you're ever going to work with a coach, Anthony's, Emmanuel's accredited with the Demartini method, just make sure they're accredited, just so they have someone accountable to, <laughs> that they're not just being rodeo players out there and just saying, yes, I'm a coach, but is anyone checking over their work for compliance, you know? So next competency is coaching um, presence. We covered that. Active listening. How cliche is this, active listening, active listening. How are you, workshops upon workshops, work says go here, active listening, active listening. How do we know we're actively listening? Well, because we are focusing so fully in what they're saying. We're so completely in their shoes that you've just even lost yourself already. You're there going, oh, so you went to jail, and this happened, and that happened, and someone almost, wow, okay, I wonder, well, wonder what I'll do, and then this is all playing in the back of your head, and you're trying not to talk because you've got 10% <laughs> to, to, to talk because it's really there, they're paying you a lot of money to go and coach them, so you're not there preaching on them. You're listening to make sure that you can play tennis with them or basketball with them so they can keep shooting the hoops of their goals. So the coach listening is completely attuned as a learner and listening happens at the logical, emotional and organic level at one time. So there's all these fancy words. 
but it really, really works. How do I know? Because I've got 1,100 videos. And I'll show you some of it, like just a screenshot, <laughs> because we don't have enough time. But you know, we'll, we'll tell you how you can do this if you want to. So active listening is, 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 is an art on its own. The coach is listening in the present, but the hearing, but hearing also the client's future development. The coach hears the totality of the client's greatness and gifts, as well as limiting beliefs and patterns. So no one's saying that you're believing everything they're saying, but as a coach, your agenda does not matter. It's the client's agenda. Okay. So the coach's listening is cumulative from session to session. So you better cultivate a good memory because, you know, we're, we're looking at what they said and we're just making sure that they're on point. And that's why, like you said before, why do we have a video for us, but it's also for them. It's our policing to them and go, ah, denial pattern coming out again, huh? <laughs> you know, in session two, you said this and this and this, and you said you were going to do that. You want to hear? Here, let me just pull that up for you. Were you lying there? Is that... Are we playing games here? So you're not really interested in doing your goals. You really don't want to get a job after all. Okay, well, let's just go back out there. And we've got to be able to release them as well if, if they're there to kind of cripple the system and cripple your system, <laughs> you know. But that's active listening. Powerful questioning. Ability to ask questions that reveal information needed for a maximum benefit. Oh, I do this session with clients for about 10 hours and I coach all my students one-on-one -on -one because every single coach that comes on board has goals and things that they want to achieve. And the powerful questioning is, is there to invoke discovery, is to be, it, there's so many things in there and I kind of encapsulate it in, in, in one minute. So look at the MCC level. The coach asks mostly, if not always, direct, evocative questions. So if we're not courageous, we can't do this job. We have to call them for what they're telling you, the lies that they're telling you. You've got to really just call it and, and say it as it is so that they can learn. So that there's no none of that when they walk out and go, oh, should I should have said that, should I have said that, you know. And, and how we cultivate powerful questioning is by going back on the video log, because it's tangible. Case notes is not so tangible. You can kind of encapsulate the one hour in a couple of lives and you're going, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> you know, whereas the video, the supervisor is there going, hey, powerful questioning, maybe that, what you're kind of just telling the client what to do, you're not really asking them what they learn from it or how it's further getting them closer to their destination or their goal. So that that is really, really a good one. So the coach is not afraid of questions that will make either the coach or the client both uncomfortable. So you know, coaching um, in sports, you know, the coaches are there and they're they're making the, 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 the athlete uncomfortable so that they can push through to the next level. And we push for the disciplinary, like not even disciplinary, for the love of them excelling and getting higher and higher with their knowledge and their actions. So direct communication, you know, no, like Anthony said, walking on eggshells, none of that, you just come at it and it's all on tape and you're there and you're really chopping away and making sure you're getting results. So you're being clear, you're articulate, you're direct in your question. It's almost like, I saw some Royal Navy guys in here. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's like that, you know, there's no doubt about it. That's, that's what you do. No coloring in, no sh sugar coating, none of that. Right to the point. And um, if we look at the novice and the, prof or the master, so the coach is sometimes fairly direct, usually uses too many words, feels the need to dress up a question, whereas in master level, the coach easily and freely shares what is so for the coach without an attachment. So I'll tell them my story and what I saw and what I've been through, 
And it's like, well, how does that fit with where you are right now? Because if they give me a jail story, I'll give them a jail story. If they give me a mental illness story, I'll give them a when I was in hospital story. So I answer their questions with my story and then I put it back on them to tell me, do they still want to be there or do they want to get out? And it's up to them to decide. Creating awareness. Who do you think that they're addicted or mentally ill clients, and I'm stigmatizing here just for posterity's sake, are aware? No one, yeah. <laughs> there you go, thank you. Because <laughs> they are aware just of their situation as they see it. So they need our help to take them from there and kind of take them, come over our side. It doesn't work all the time, but because you've got the videos, because you're really doing what a master coach should do, it works every single time. And I know when you work with um, Emmanuel and Moira, Amy is learning to be a recovery coach. They will learn. They will learn. It takes about four, five, six, seven years to be master level coach. I've been at it since 2002. So it does take time. Sorry. Yeah, so it does take time. To be first level, it says I've got first level, but because I'm doing all sorts of things and I haven't gone all the way, but you know I can tell where my coaching is because I have video logs, and because I have mentors and supervisors, and we have you know sessions where I really really grade myself and they grade me. So the coach has not concluded what awareness is. Coach is willing really not to know. So. When it says creating awareness, you don't have to know what they know. It's up to them. It's their journey. And it, everything doesn't have to be, as a coach, illuminated for us. They're not there to serve us. We're there to serve them. As long as they've had their aha moment and they've got their actions and they're ready to go, that's perfect. Is everyone okay? Does it, we all want to stand up and everyone falling asleep? We're good? <laughs> I'm just looking here and everyone's like, let's just stand up for a bit. <laughs> Just shake things up. <laughs> I'm falling asleep. You're watching it. <laughs> 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 Thank you. I just became aware. <laughs> The people might be falling asleep. <laughs> All right. What do we got? What's the time? Ooh. <laughs> okay, I'll better power through this. Uh, designing actions. A coach's job is for the clients to action what their goals, eventuality would be. So a client, um, the other day I told him to march out of the office because you know, he wanted to understand his legal ramifications. He's got 36 charges, drug charges, and, you know, he's quit for three weeks. And he goes, I don't know why I'm coming here. And I'm like, really? <laughs> okay, so what don't you know about why you're coming here? Well, I don't know why I'm paying money when I've already quit. For how long? Three weeks. And you think that's enough. You know, I've quit for eight years, but I failed for five months, so really, technically, three years. Um, and I still have a lot to learn. So I challenge them. And then if they really don't want to play, then I call the lawyer right then and there, stuff, privacy. I'm like, I'm going to call your lawyer right now, and I'm going to say, can you rescind that letter to the court that I gave you? Because if you're not following through with your committed goals, Take that out of the file. I don't want, don't want to commit perjury. I believed it then, but now they're saying no, they don't want to do it anymore. They still want to use clients right in front of me. And no thanks. Oh, okay, Marie, no worries. I'll tear that up. And the client's there in shock going, what? Counselors can't, you know, I'm not a counselor. <laughs> I'm not, I'm a coach. So, you know, we're running out of time. So I'll keep going, planning and goal setting. The art. Well, just with the actions, if they're not actioning and if they're just putting you around a little finger, we're not really coaching. And, um, you know, we want to be coaching them. Designing action, planning and goal setting. 
So the coach works with the client to clarify and develop their goals and um, we engage them and relate to them and make sure that they have all the tools needed. And there are a lot of tools needed for goals to get achieved, isn't it? I mean, with the referrals that we need to arrange, the things we need to arrange for them, it's, it's phenomenal. And if we've got all bureaucracy and red tape in front of us, it's hard to action. So if you guys want to really move client, get a coach. We don't have any ethical boundaries. <laughs> We're just going to go right in there and get to the matter and, and do it right. Of course, we're accountable and we want to progress them, but when it comes to just the things that's not going to serve them, we don't, we don't do it like, you know, all, you guys all know the bureaucracy and the red tapes that we need to do. That's compliance here, compliance there. So now we've got the next slide, which is why coaching with substance. Well, there isn't any charities out there that's certifying and accrediting recovery coaches in Australia. We're the pioneers. As we speak, I've done my market research. There's practitioners out there and there's definitely coaches out there. Are they accredited? I'm not so sure. Um, I haven't had a time to have a conversation with 325,000 of them, so I can't tell you, but I'm doing my PhD on it, so we will get there and we will we'll get to the bottom of this and I will contribute to the journals about that. But we really would like to train recovery coaches recovery coaches because it's time. We need to start using those competencies that I've shown you within our practice because really the results is in the pudding. You know, when I work with clients, they're done, they're finished by the time they finish the 12 sessions. When they work with a manual, they're done in four sessions. I'm like, what do you do? <laughs> I've got the Demartini method. I'm like, oh, I've got to have that, but that's 60 grand. Oh, okay, I'll stick to my because, you know, their cutting edge information. It really does changes at a different level. So train recovery coaches, all the information is there. The benefits of training, I don't need to sell you, I'm not here to sell any to the benefits and, and what I do. I'm just here to join with you if that's what you want to do for yourself. So um, there's just some forms that's going around right now. And if we can please implore you to help us, let's win together. Let's win back the lives of those that were lost in addiction. The lives of those that almost off themselves, you know. Let's, there's so many things that I want to do with you. I'm so excited right now. We can publish books together if you are willing to wear your heart on your sleeve and be open with your story. Or you might have clients that are willing to open up and what happened in their lives. Book fundraising, you know, if you work for an institution or people with addiction issues are not going to say, I have addiction. So having the book enables them to say, they read it and they go, oh, someone finally understands and they're not going to name it. They're not going to shame me. They're not going to, they're going to listen to me. Perfect. So let's do that together. Interviews on YouTube. Like I said, 90 odd thousand views on YouTube of the stories that we put up there. There's only a couple right now, but I really want each and every one of you to tell me what your world looks like with addiction. And let's do an interview together. We'll fly to where you are and let's, let's collaborate. Referrals, we definitely need um, referrals of people that you feel you can't change. I mean, we do have about 45 odd leads that come in every single day. So there's about three, 400. So that's why we need recovery coaches as well, because how, of how active we are in social media. Scholarships, we need to practice coaching for the students. And that's just some of the things there. And of course, my favorite, Mani Pacquiao, is from my country, Philippines. And if you look at my book, it's got the Filipino flag in front of it. So, um, yeah, so we do a lot of work in the community. We're with the media. We teach you how to do your practice so that you can do it as an adjunct to what your job is or to what your company is. Or you can simply use those competencies within your role. However way you want to do it, we want to work with you. So I'll give you a minute or two to fill out the form there, please, and see if you have any ideas of how you can work with us. And as a gift for filling out the form, 
you get a copy of the digital copy of the books. So I'll be digitally giving you copies of The Sit With Monk and The Kill Your Addiction. And obviously if you want to buy the books then they're available to be bought as a donation or a fundraising is 35 and 20 for the book. But yeah, just take a minute to do that, please. <laughs>